If AI learns to reason, they'll replace most, if not all, scientists and mathematicians very quickly. This year's Nobel Prizes gave us a taste of this. Not only did the Nobel Prize in physics go to the development of AI, the one in chemistry went partly to deep mind for their AI-driven advancements in understanding protein folding. In the future, I believe, not only will pretty much all of science be done by AI, it will become a requirement to prevent cognitive biases. Indeed, two papers just came out in which computer scientists have presented the first full AI scientists. Oh yes, fellow scientists, you have no idea what's about to hit you. We no longer need to ask which jobs AI will replace first because it's already happened. The jobs that seem to have been replaced most so far are those requiring fast text generation either to feed news websites or for chatbots. Though it's questionable whether AI is currently much of a benefit for news websites. The US tech site CNET, for example, began using AI to push out news at the end of 2022 as a competing website site happily reported, the articles were riddled with mistakes. Last year, it turned out that Cosmos magazine had been using AI to create some articles and promptly complaints rolled in, though most of the complaints come from journalists at risk of being replaced. And this is just what AI can do now. I'd be surprised if not OpenAI and Meta and many other places are working on integrating math software into large language models and probably a bunch of other tools as well, like graphics software. And once they've done that, they'll come for scientists. This is because in most fields of science, standard math software is all you need. Yes, there are exceptions to this. Maybe if you're cooking up amplitudehedra in the basement, you don't want AI company. But let's be real, for most disciplines, calculus and statistics is more than enough. And given that, an AI could, for example, design an online questionnaire, recruit people, analyze data and publish a full paper all by itself. This isn't an entirely new idea, of course. People have used AI to formulate hypotheses and execute automated experiments before, but there was always a human involved at some stage. Now we have, for the first time, an end-to-end -end service, a chain of AI processes that emulates a scientist's entire work from hypothesis generation to publication. In a paper that just appeared, computer scientists present the first AI scientist and write that it's taking us closer to a world where endless affordable creativity and innovation can be unleashed on the world's most challenging problems. Each idea is implemented and developed into a full paper at a meager cost of less than $15 per paper, illustrating the potential for our framework to democratize research or more likely to flood research with crap, though at least it'll be democratically flooded by crap. Their AI scientist is just a sequence of tasks executed by existing large language models, from brainstorming to literature research, laying out a research plan, executing it and writing a paper. Though they seem to have skipped the part where you question your life choices because it's 3am and you still haven't found that minus you were looking for. The research which area the AI scientist worked on was, of course, AI science. They then had an AI reviewer scrutinize the AI-generated papers about AI research and found that Anthropic Sonnet 3.5 consistently produces the best papers, with a few of them even achieving a score that exceeds the threshold for acceptance at a standard machine learning conference that presumably will be attended by AIs. They did not publish the AI-generated papers, but seeing that their code is open source on GitHub, I have no doubt others will do it for them. The second group took an entirely different approach to AI science. They generated a computer game with a virtual environment that they called Discovery World with discoverable laws that this artificial world is governed by, including chemistry, physics, epidemiology and rocket science. In this 
this virtual world, they had quests to discover these laws. For example, that people fall ill and you have to figure out why. Then they had GPT-40 and humans try to discover these laws. They found that the humans succeeded more often, especially when it comes to actually completing the research. So at least for now, we have somewhat of an edge. You might find this all a little silly and implausible, but I'm convinced that once AI learns to reliably perform math calculations, we'll see a flood of AI written research articles. I can think of many calculations that can be automated in my research area, such as finding new solutions to Einstein's field equations, which is mostly trial and error, or the state of the art for inventing new particles to explain anomalies in high energy physics. There are thousands of people who currently live from publishing such papers. So the interesting question is, if AI can write better papers than particle physicists, what will happen? Good thing I don't work on that anymore. To me, science is more than a profession. It's a way to understand the world and to solve problems. This is why I'm happy to work together with Brilliant, whose mission is to help you learn science in the easiest and most engaging way possible. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. I found it to be very effective to learn something new. It really gives you a feeling for what's going on and helps you build general problem-solving skills. They cover a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on differential equations or large language models. And they're adding new courses each month. It's a fast and easy way to learn, and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with their course on quantum computing or differential equations. Sounds good. I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina. That way you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.